Welcome back to All About Winning Daily Fantasy Sports. My name is Ty Patton. Week 7 is in the books, and in this video, I'm going to recap Week 7 and take a look at the player pool that I developed for Week 7 and check out what went right and what can be better. I use the lineup for the uh, Winning Millie Maker on DraftKings as my measuring stick each week, and that's where I'd like to start this video. The actual winning lineup in Week 7 had a total score of 246.36, which is right here on the screen. They, had, they used um, Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, who scored 46.76 points. Josh Jacobs at running back, scored 19.4 points. Um, Latavius Murray at running back, um, scored 35 points. John Brown at wide receiver, 19.3 um, points. Stefan Diggs, wide receiver, 24.2 points. Marvin Jones at wide receiver, 43.3 points. Jimmy Graham at tight end to go with Aaron Rodgers, 16.5 points. In the flex position, they had Dalvin Cook from Minnesota, who scored 30.9 points. And the um, Buffalo Bills, the um, top defense of the week as far as uh, salary, uh, scored 11 points. So there you have it. This was a, this was a three player mini game stack um, with Rodgers, Rodgers, Graham, and they brought it back with uh, Josh, Josh Jacobs. Um, fairly high scoring game, 68, po or, yeah, 68 points. And it also used another three player game stack, um, which uh, used um, Diggs and Cook from the same game and brought it back with Marvin Jones in another um, high scoring game. Uh, this game actually had um, 72 points, and the um, Green Bay game had 68 points. So there you go. That's um, the winning lineup, the Millie Maker. Um, in comparison, the optimal lineup that you could have uh, created using the players from my player pool, you could have had Jared Goff at quarterback, who scored 25.02 points. Running back, Latavius Murray. He scored 35 points. Running back Dalvin Cook, 30.90 points. Wide receiver Hopkins, 28.60 points. Wide receiver Hilton, 19.40 points. Wide receiver Brown from Buffalo, 19.30 points. Um, tight end Waller from Oakland, 34.60 points. Uh, flexed um, tight end Graham from Green Bay, 16.50 points. And defense special team, the Giants, um, or 10 points, and that's that lineup would have scored 219.32 points, which would have been 85th place out of 411,764 entries on the Millie Maker, and that would have won you $750, which is a 75 times uh, re return on your investment. I didn't have that lineup, it was um, when I did the opt or the um, yeah, the optimizer, that particular lineup was in there. I normally, especially in a, a GPP or a, um, tournament with um, more entries, I like to at least have a target to go with my um, quarterback. So I probably would have never had that lineup in myself in any um, formulation. But next, I want to look at the players that were the top scoring at each position in week seven. The top quarterbacks were as followed. Lamar Jackson, who scored 26.32 points. Jared Goff, 25.02 points. Phillip Rivers, 24.16 points. Ryan Tannehill, 23.18 points. Andy Dalton, 21.34 points. Josh Allen, 21.28 points. And Deshaun Watson with 20.52 20, 20 points. I had two of those seven, um, two of the top seven in my player pool, I had golf and um, Josh Allen. The top running backs last week were Latavius Murray, who scored 35 points. Dalvin Cook, 30.90 points. Leonard Fournette, who scored 19.50 points. Josh Jacobs, 19.40 points. Um, Jones from Green Bay, 18.30 points. <clears throat> Excuse me. Henry from Tennessee, who scored 17.80 points. And Barkley from the Giants, who scored 17 points. I had six of those top seven. The only one that I didn't have was uh, Jones from Green Bay. The top wide receivers were Marvin Jones from Detroit, who scored 43.30 points. 
and was the top scorer on the main slate Sunday. Um, number two was Hopkins with 28.60 points. Michael Thomas from New Orleans, 25.10 points. Robinson from the Bears, 24.70 points. Corey Davis from Tennessee with 20 points. T.Y. Hilton, 19.40 points. And John Brown from Buffalo, 19.30 points. I had four of those seven. Um, I did not have the top wide receiver, um, Jones. Nor did I have Robinson from um, the Bears or Corey Davis from Tennessee. The top tight ends were Waller, who scored 34.60 points. Jimmy Graham, 16.50 points. Henry from San, or the Chargers, 15.70 points. Gerald Everett from the Rams scored 15 points. And Hooper from Atlanta scored 14.60 points. I actually had four of those five, so I really did well this week in the running backs and tight ends. Tight ends are, to me, really difficult to get right each week. And I feel like running backs are um, consistent week in and week out if you focus on um, touches. The top de defense special teams, top scoring uh, defense this past week was the Rams, who scored 21 points. Next was the Ravens, who scored 18 points. The 49ers, who scored 15 points. Number four was the Bills, who scored 11 points. And the Giants um, were number five and scored 10 points. Overall, out of those um, top 31 players, I did have 18 of them in the player pool. Some takeaways from Week 7. Obviously, the players that were leading the way in scoring were also leading the way in touches, targets, and snap percentage, which we will look at as we begin um, working on Week 8. There's some interesting numbers um, that I wanted to share with you. The top quarterback and the number 7 quarterback were separated by less than six points. The top two running backs were, were separated by a little over four points, with the next five running backs only being separated by a total of 2.5 points. So there was a lot of um, tight scoring going um, after you got away from the top scoring um, at those two positions. The number two and number seven wide receivers were separated by a little over nine points. And the number two and number five tight end were separated by less than two points. The top defensive special team score was 21. And the number five overall scoring uh, defensive special team uh, scored 10 points. Uh, the top dis, um, projected defensive special team was the Bills. Uh, and they, were, they had a salary of $4,300. And they scored 11 points. So the top running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defensive special teams were all um, $5,100 or less in salary. If you add in the, <clears throat> excuse me, if you add in the top quarterback who was Lamar Jackson at $6,800, and the top at each position, you would have had an average salary of $4,860, which would have opened up a lot of. Um, value for you pretty much could have had whoever you wanted to, uh, to fill in the other places. And some other things to look at too is um, the overall percentages as far as uh, ownership. If you look at this winning lineup in particular, Rogers was only 2% owned. Um, Josh Jacobs was pretty chalky at 27%. Um, Latavius Murray, that's not too bad at 9.7%. John Brown at 16.6%. Uh, Stephon Diggs at 5%. Marvin Jones, 2.3%. Jimmy Graham at 2.8%. Dalvin Cook, 25.9%. He's pretty chalky. And the Bills um, were 16.8% and really didn't need them. You, the Rams were number one. They were um, $2,700 um, and scored 21 points. So there you got, um, let's see, 27, 28, 30, 30, 40, 56, and 5 is uh, 61, and 61, 67, 67, and uh, 30, 97, 93, and 17. So 110% total on draft percentage. And I was listening to some things the other day, and they were talking about 
some of the winning lineups. I mean, that's that's pretty average. I mean, you, um, and there were some of the other lineups that were um, uh, that didn't win first place, but were in the top ten. Actually, had some really low ownership. And I mean, if you look at this, Rogers at two point two percent at quarterback with um, from that game, Josh Jacobs, Jimmy Graham was only two point eight percent. So those two players, right? Uh, that game stack only had a total of 5% between them. So those are some things to look at. I don't believe you should just go in right before, um, right after the injury report comes out and look at the ownership and pick all the lower owned players. I don't think that'll get you anywhere. But, you know, this this line up here, this guy differentiated himself and um, not sure how much he spent uh, total on this lineup, but um, for 246.36, and he won the million dollars by himself. I, I believe I heard somewhere where he only had five entries in this contest. I actually had two. <clears throat> I didn't do well. I liked a lot of the players from the Rams in the um, Falcons game, and um, so it, it just didn't um, pan out for me this week. The players were there to, to get up there, but this wasn't a um, overall great week so now it's time on to move on to week eight i'm really excited about that i'm gonna be doing a few um, things a little bit different i'm I, i'm still gonna break down the um positions by you know um wednesday i'm gonna or t tonight i'm gonna try to get out the quarterback strategy tomorrow I'm, thursday i'm gonna try to do running back um and wide receiver if i can and Friday, I do um, tight end defense special teams. And then, of course, Saturday, we'll do the lineup building. My next video will um, be coming out shortly. It's going to be actually the Thursday night football showdown between the uh, Vikings and Redskins. I'm going to break that down for you real quick. And then we'll start, as I mentioned, start breaking down week eight. Thank you for joining me. If you please hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, so you get notified when my next uh, video post. I'd really appreciate it. Feel free to drop any comments below, any opinions. Um, I haven't heard from any of you as far as how you did. Uh, if you use my player pool solely, it was there, but it was difficult to build. But um, we'll get back to the drawing board and build some winning lineups this weekend. Again, thank you for joining me. I'll see you real soon. My name is Ty Patton. This is all about winning daily fantasy sports. Take care.